Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. Today, Ableton announced a public beta for Live 12.2, and it comes jam packed with quite a lot of new features. And so I thought, after having about half a day with it, that I would share my currently seven favorite features in the Live 12.1 beta. The first one actually deserves its own video, and I'm going to do that, is Auto filter, which got a complete overhaul. You can see it looks quite different. It's got more visual feedback that you can get, and it's got new filters. It got new LFO waveforms, and it's also got uh, two LFO quantization modes that are new, and other things as well. So this like, let's listen to the sound first without. So it's actually quite boring and simple, but uh, here we've got a new filter, which is a comb filter. And it makes the sound so much more interesting. And we've got a DJ filter as well. that controls both a low and high pass depending on the setting of the control. Then we've got resampling. Notch and low pass. Vowel. And I'd set it to the new LFO waveform called ramp up. And there's also ramp down. And we've got sample and hold and also steps. So there's a lot of it in auto filter and I'm going to make a new video for this probably coming out tomorrow. Number two are custom icons for things in the browser. So for example, here I've got saved searches for audio facts and Max for Live audio facts and the same for the media facts so that they're separated with their live devices or Max for Live devices. And before we had these icons and they're all the same, but now I can do a right click here and I can select an icon. And so for audio facts, the normal icon would be this one. So I'm gonna choose this and then I'm going to choose here the Max for Life icon for the Max for Life audio facts. And this is the icon for media facts. And I'm going to choose this one again. And so you can do this for saved searches. You can also, for example, swap out the icon for samples or any of the other items on the library. And if you want to go back to the default, you can do this here as well. And you can see you can also rename things. And on the places, it's the same for any of the folders that you can add. So for example, I've got two folders currently active here. So I could say, for example, I'm going to choose this icon. And for music, I'm going to take the star. And so you have uh, quite a lot of icons. I'm going to keep them open for a couple of seconds so you can see what's available. I'm going to have to kind of explore them a little further. And so the only things that you can't change the icon for is packs, cloud, push, user library, and current project. But anything else you can change the icons for, which I think is really useful, especially if you don't have much screen space, like on a laptop, then you can basically set an icon that you can recognize and you can just keep it this small. So next up, we've got the new options in the content options menu in the browser. So here you can see these three dots. And if I click on it, you can decide what should be shown. So most of them we already had, but one thing that I really like is that you can show what place it is under. And so here you can check. So what pack, for example, does it come from? Okay, so this is from the user library, drum essentials, and so on and so forth, a built-in, so the core library. And you can add more as well, like size or rank, and I can enlarge this. And you can 
just drag and drop them so you can reorder them as well the way you like them. I personally find this quite helpful. Next up, we've got bounce to new track. And that means that we can actually bounce a time selection of a track in arrangement view to a new track. And that would be rendered as audio and it will render all the facts as well that are on the track. And so I can just make a selection here and there's two options. You can do right click or control click on Mac and choose bounce to new track. But you can see there's also a shortcut available for it. On Windows, it's control, alt, shift and J. And on Mac, it's command, option, shift and J. And so we can just execute it and it creates a new audio track right underneath it with the bounced audio. And you can also see that the time selection now has been deactivated in the original track. And so we can just have a quick listen. And so it still works seamlessly and uh, we've got the audio in here. By the way, if you want to freeze and flatten and you're looking for the command, that has now been renamed to bounce track in place. Still doesn't have a shortcut, but I've got a solution for that. I'm going to need that. And also very cool is the new oscillator type that was added to melt called chord. I'm going to turn the second oscillator off so we can hear it just on its own. And you can see that it's scale aware, which obviously makes sense. And we've got two macros shape, so it's the chord shape and then inversion. And I have just a clip here with C2 playing so that we can hear it. So these are the shapes, so we can have different chords. And then inversions are basically starting with the root note, added an octave higher instead, and then the lowest note, and so on and so forth. And so I'm gonna, I've got another clip here just playing a little run. And now this is without using the current scale, so it doesn't sound quite harmonious and it does sound out of tune instead. So we can turn it on. And of course, we can also use the modulation matrix to make changes. So let's open it up. And I think I'm going to use the modulation envelope. And then to uh, modulate the OSC macro one. We could also use the LFO. I'm going to set it to something pretty big. Also very cool is the new delay routing mode in RAW. So I've got a little guitar clip here. Now let's add RAW with this new delay routing mode. And the way it works is it basically you have a, the direct sound and then it will be fed 
through the feedback mode, but the amount doesn't matter that you set it to, to the delayed stage. So it's delayed by the setting here, and it also adds some distortion. So let's have a listen. So you can have like a slap back sound through that as well, just with a slight distortion. And we, of course, can also choose different feedback modes. Triplets. Let's go back to synced. And then we can add the amount for direct and delayed as well. And adjust the bias. So now, for example, we've got pretty much no sound left. We can do the same here as well. And we can decide how much they should be, or like how they should be blended. And then obviously we could also use the modulation matrix change that so for example Also, a lot more other features that were included in Live 12.1 for all, but that's a bit much to mention. And last but definitely not least, both resonators and spectral resonator are now scalaware. So ever since the scale awareness feature came out for Live 12, I wanted the resonators audio effects to have this feature as well. And in Live 12.2, we're finally getting it. So let's start with this one. So this is what it looks like the old way without the using the current scale. And if we turn this on, we don't have the C2 anymore and then it, setting it in semitones, but we have scale degrees all the way through, even for the note. And so we can just set this, say plus two, plus four. So we've got the third, the fifth, Plus seven is an octave, and then we could go an octave down as well. Or we could go minus 14 for this one. This is what it sounds like if it's completely dry wet. And then with spectral resonator, we have to make sure that here first we have to set the frequency control mode to a MIDI note value. And then we can, so for example, this doesn't sound that great because A1 is not right for, for B flat minor. So let's turn this on and then Thank you. 
Let's set it to maybe to around 50%. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.